Welcome back, everybody. Tonight, we're excited to share with you our first ever power panel. I like pronouncing things in different ways. All right, here to break down some of the day's biggest stories, David Sirota, radio host and syndicated columnist, Jane Hampshire, the founder of Fire Dog Lake, and Adam Green, co-founder of the Progressive Change Campaign Committee. Look at all those lovely progressives. <laughs> that is an all-star progressive panel. I love it. All right, guys, first topic is Fox News. A uh, new report out in New York Magazine about it, how they basically secretly run the Republican Party. I'm not sure we're surprised by that, but I want to give you one of the quotes because I find it really interesting. They, they said you can't run, a, a person said you can't run for the Republican nomination without talking to Roger, that's a GOP uh, insider apparently, and they said every single candidate has consulted with Roger, but he hasn't found any of them, including the adults in the room, John Huntsman, Mitch Daniels, Mitt Romney, compelling, quote, he finds flaws in every one, said a per person familiar with his thinking. So. Let me start with you, David. Uh, is he really the boss of the Republican Party? You know how they used to talk about Limbaugh being the titular head of the Republican Party? Is it, in fact, really Ailes? I think there's something to that. I mean, my take is that Roger Ailes is a businessman first. Uh, he works for Rupert Murdoch, and they want to make a lot of money. And that Roger Ailes' interest in having a strong Republican nominee for president is both political. I mean, he was a political operative. It's ideological. But I also think that they want a very, very... Um, a very, very toughly fought uh, presidential election because that means big ratings uh, for Fox, especially if it's a conservative candidate that can uh, specifically rally Fox's base, Fox's base viewership. Jane, can a Republican win the nomination without kissing Roger Ailes's ring? No, he can't. I think it's very clear at this point that uh, Roger Ailes really has to say we're going to get behind a candidate before they can expect to win. And in, true, in telling fashion, now that Ailes is casting his gaze on Chris Christie, the White House is now doing opposition research on uh, Chris Christie. You know, you, the good news about this article is that even Roger Ailes has his limits. He thinks Glenn Beck is unstable and that Sarah Palin uh, made a huge blunder with her blood libel speech. But the bad news is, is that this is what happens when you get so much media consolidation and the power of one person, basically. And Roger Ailes has successfully leveraged the ever-expanding Murdoch media empire uh, to the point where he can virtually block out the sun uh, if he wants to for any candidate among the people that they're going to count on for votes. Right. And, you know, he, and, and it turns out, you know, you mentioned Palin in there. Uh, an insider apparently says that he thinks Palin is stupid, which is... Wow. Okay. Well, and of course, Fox News shot back saying, well, if he finds who that insider is, he's no longer being going to be an insider, which to me is not much of a denial. You know, they, no. they also said, oh, of course she's smart, of course, but come on. Well, she, she gave that blood libel speech, which was maybe the stupidest uh, decision of all time. And Ailes had actually counseled her not to do that. He said, look, right. you sound hey, like a victim Adam, and it's horrible. No, absolutely. Adam, look, I think they might have screwed up here, right? Because the whole point that Fox News did was, and I think the most damaging part was, they would say, oh, we're fair and balanced. The rest of the news media should listen to us. We do real reporting. But look at one of the quotes here from the article. Um, Chris Ruddy, CEO of conservative magazine Newsmax, says he's just got it. We're going to go into an election period, and he doesn't want Fox to be seen as the front of the Republican Party, referring to Roger Ailes, of course. But way too late, right? I mean, it's obvious that they're a front for the Republican Party. Yeah, you know, it'd be really interesting to see what would happen if a focus group of Fox viewers read this article that really, you know, pulled the, uh, the veneer away from Fox. One thing that really struck me was that one of Sarah Palin's big arguments, one of Fox's big arguments, is something against elitism. This is very much a gatekeeper role, one person making a, a choice, at, and also at a point when Sarah Palin, Sarah Palin needed a ride across the nation, Fox loaned her their personal corporate jet and gave her a, you know, a ride. Most Americans don't have that. So I, I actually encourage all Fox viewers to read this article. My guess is that their impression of Fox would change a little bit. And Cenk, if I, if I can add one, one thing to that, you know, what's interesting also about this piece is that it makes very clear that Fox is not conservative television. It's Republican Party television. And there's a big difference there between uh, having an ideological perspective and having a complete partisan perspective. And I think that's what Fox's interest really is, Roger Ailes' interest, is in the Republican Party and its political power rather than, let's say, uh, an ideological message uh, that is based in some sort of conservative principle.
No, I think that's exactly right. I think you nailed it because when Glenn Beck goes conservative and he goes Tea Party, they liked it in the beginning, and then all of a sudden they thought it got a little out of control and was hurting the Republican Party. Not hurting the conservative movement, but hurting the Republican Party, and all of a sudden they show Glenn Beck the door. Look, I'm going to ask one more thing about this. I think Roger Ailes is perhaps the most powerful guy in the country. I mean, there he is with Chris Christie, like deciding whether, you know, who should be the candidate inviting him along with Rush Limbaugh. And I think, I think you know, you guys nailed it. It's this elitism of, of Fox News deciding who's going to run the country. And didn't they do this before? Uh, you know, back in, of course, in 2000, most famously, Fox News picked President Bush's cousin to decide who would, you know, that he was their vote counter. And he's the one that declared Bush was president. I mean, Adam, isn't this part and parcel of the problem and why the rest of the media have to start ignoring these guys who are clearly a propaganda machine? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I don't feel like I can give much insight here. I mean, this is confirming everything that we've been saying for years, Cenk, <laughs> about what Fox is. And, right, so people just need to read this article. The media need to read this article. Fox viewers need to read this article. And let's just get out of our system the fact that Fox is in any way, shape, or form a legitimate news outlet. It's not. All right. Uh, now, let's stay on presidential politics for a second here. Uh, I, I can't believe this, but Trump says he might get back into the race. Let, let me just show you a quick bite here. It was just a decision I made, but who knows, stranger things have happened. You would not rule out a late entry if nothing pans out for the GOP? I would not rule it out, no. I would not rule it out. All right, can I get an across-the-board agreement from all of you guys? Uh, Trump, clown of the earth, totally not relevant? Absolutely. Yep. All I right, think he's very successful at getting his headlines, naming the headlines, and he's done it once again. Okay, so we're, we're absolutely clear on that. I wanted to make sure. Now, speaking of presidential candidates, Biden apparently in Cincinnati uh, told a bunch of funders that he might run in 2016. He would be 74 at the time. Jane, does that make any sense or is that absurd? I think it is absurd, but it isn't the most absurd thing. I mean, Biden's job is going up to Capitol Hill and basically being the great compromiser. You've got a group of politicians who are living in bizarro land. They're not addressing anything that the American public cares about. They're not dealing with, uh, you know, the, the job situation. They're not dealing with health care. They're not dealing with the things that, you know, that Americans want. Uh, they're listening to people who think that cutting Medicare is a good idea. And Biden has to go sell this in 2016. Uh, I think that he's going to have a tough time. All right, real quick, David uh, and Adam, any chance he runs or, or can win? I mean, I think there's a chance that he's, that he's going to run. I, I think it won't be a situation like Al Gore uh, in 2000 where he's sort of the presumptive nominee. I think there's a lot of up-and-coming Democrats. And, and I think that Joe Biden um, hasn't really uh, made it necessarily a name for himself outside of the Obama administration, which I think will be uh, probably pretty necessary for a Democratic candidate uh, in 2016. Adam? Yeah, yeah you know... 2016 is going to be an opportunity for us to elect a real progressive president. Uh, I don't think uh, an, an old Democrat is the same as a bold progressive. We need a bold progressive, and we're going to be looking for that kind of ideal candidate. We don't have it right now in the White House, but we need one in 2016. Oh, damn. I knew you were going to go there. Okay. So now, <laughs> speaking of bold progressives, let's go to the Senate races. Now, we've got one in Ohio. we got one in Montana, Missouri, and Minnesota. Uh, I know, Adam, you were part of the people that commissioned a poll in those states. Let me just show the Ohio numbers. When you ask people, hey, are you opposed to cutting Medicare to balance the budget? Boy, are they opposed to it. 76% say they're opposed to that. 61% opposed to cutting Medicaid and 80% opposed to cutting Social Security. And, and the numbers were basically the same in all four of those states. Very, very similar. What message do you think those Democratic senators in those races get out of a poll like that? Well, the net message they need to get is don't even come close to cutting Social Security, Medicare, or Medicaid benefits. It is a huge political loser, and Democrats can't go there. And I'll say this. You know, myself, Jane, and David, all of us in the end of 2010, we were told as progressives, don't take your ball and go home. Get in line. Support Democrats. And our answer was, we're supporting Democrats, but we warned you months ago that if you drop the ball on things like the public option, that your turnout will not be what you need it to be. Well, we're telling you, wait in advance, Democratic Party, don't go there. There. Do not cut Social Security and Medicare. It won't be us that you have to fear. It's those voters in Ohio and Missouri and Minnesota and other places. Now, you, Jane, they're getting great. They're getting great political capital out of this. I mean, they're beating the hell out of people, including the 26th district, saying the Republicans are coming after your Medicare. But do you think there's a chance that they'll go to strike a deal with the Republicans, including Vice President Biden, doing that negotiating right now and cut Medicare and Social Security anyway? 
Well, that's been their line all along, is that we need to cut it to save it so that the Republicans won't do it because they'll do worse. But the, the message of this poll should be that is just nothing people will ever believe. If you cut it, you cut it. You take away your, your they have that wonderful Ryan vote that is now like the beast that ate Cincinnati. It is rolling <laughs> through the Republican Party. And if they try and say, we're going to go up and do this grand compromise, well, we'll just cut it a little bit. Not only do they take it away, they piss everybody off. I, I just don't know why they would do it, but it seems like something they want to do. Last thing, Dave, is there any way that they can walk this back? Because remember, the president came out and gave a speech and said, hey, you know what? I'm going to do three times as many spending cuts as I do tax tax increases, basically. Can he walk that back, or is that too late now? Well, well, I think the poll, actually, what it does is it creates an interesting dynamic where you may have the senators who are up for re-election uh, in the Democratic Party being the ones who are giving voice to the idea that the president's plan uh, to reduce Medicare uh, and to potentially cut Social Security uh, is wrong. So, in other words, you may have a situation where the seemingly most electorally vulnerable Democrats are the ones who are leading the charge within the Democratic party to tell the president that he is off base all right well let's see how it turns out it's very interesting no question all right david sirota radio host and syndicated columnist jane hampshire the founder of fire dog lake and adam green co-founder of the progressive change campaign committee the power panel thank you guys